Thank you. Alright. I'll tell you this, Jeff, about at the, at the risk of someone misunderstanding this for you and for anybody else that wants to latch hold of, a mentor told me one time, the father's idea of a mature son is one that can run the family business on his own but doesn't want to. <laughs> Chew on that for a while. <laughs> oh boy. Gosh, I got so much I don't even know where to start. You know where we're at. If you've not been here, I'm just, just lay the floor. So we've been talking, you know, about redefining love, right? Paul Paul said in Ephesians 3 that by comprehending or understanding the width, the height, the breadth, the of the love of God, in that be filled up with the fullness of God, right? Filled up with the fullness of God by understanding how it is that He loves. So we've been spending weeks now, I don't know, lost track, of just redefining what we even know about love, what we understand about it. I've been purposefully going slower than Jason normally goes, even just because we got to retrain our minds and we got to keep hearing this stuff because the world system and religion has taught us how to think and we have mindsets and we have belief systems down in us that are there and we don't even realize that they're there and they operate in our lives and they hinder us and, and they got to get plucked out. Yes. Got to get plucked out and that comes by hearing and hearing over again. Not having heard one time, hearing. Yes, amen. So I don't know about you but I got to keep hearing. Yes. And so we've been going all over that. We've been in 1 Corinthians 13, you know, the love chapter, and so we've just been breaking down. It took me, I think, three weeks to get for, through the first half of the first verse, and so we're just still going on that, right? Love is patient. Love is kind. Well, John said in 1 John that God is love. Yes. God is love, right? God is love. Now, define that for me. You say, define love. Uh, good luck with that. Define God. Right. Right, Jason. Good luck with that. Define God. So, without doing injustice to the Scripture, if He said God is love and love is kind, we can say God is kind. Amen. We can say God is patient. Yes. All those attributes of love, we could also put in to, to God, right? Yes. Because God's not going to be contrary to an attribute of what love is. Love's not going to be contrary to an attribute of who God is. That's right. So we can understand... God and understand love and figure those two out because understanding how He loves us is where all the rest of the issues of our life are going to flow from. It's understanding that. Right. However you're understanding Him to be loving you is the love that you have and the love that you have is the love that you're loving with. Amen. If there's a problem with the way that we love, it's not because of what we do. See, love is not something you do. That's right. Love is not something you do. Love is something you receive. And however you receive it is now how you have it. And how you have it is how you're doing it. So if there's a problem with the way we're doing, don't fix doing. Because your focus is still on you. <coughs> fix believing. However we're believing is how we're receiving. And however we're receiving is how we have. Alright? So don't fix this. Fix this. So he's saying if you can understand this, You'll be filled up with the fullness of God. I got a sneaking suspicion. I'm not there yet, but I got a sneaking suspicion. If we're filled up with the fullness of God, this is going to be doing pretty good, wouldn't you? Yeah. All right. So here we are. We went on down. We went on down the thing. Right. Love is patient. Love is kind. Is not jealous. Love does not brag. Is not arrogant. Does not act unbecomingly. I'm in New American Standard tonight. I've used them all. So it does not seek its own. Listen to this. Here's where we're at tonight. I, I got more. I can go on. I don't know how long this takes me, so I'm going to go until I quit and we'll just keep continuing, right? Alright, so the, here's the next one. It's not provoked. Love is not provoked. It's not provoked. I'm like, what, what's provoked? I want to understand this, right? What's provoked me? And so I think provoked means if I was to provoke you, provoke you, I would, I would do something or say something in order to cause you to do something or say something, right? It's used 
most of the time with some with kind of a negative connotation, but it not, not necessarily does it have to be negative, even though we kind of take it that way. But to provoke you, I could provoke you to do something. That means my actions or my words are causing you to react in some way with actions or words. You follow me? I can provoke you. I can I can cause you to do something, right? Well, it says love is not provoked. It's not provoked. That means I'm not going to do anything to cause it. Now see, that sounds simple. And I hear everybody saying, yeah, okay, yeah, amen to that, or whatever. And we think we got that. But we really don't got that. It's deeper than here. It's it's like because we all of us still think with the thing. Well, if I do this and not do that, God would be happy with me more. Or oh, this, I, see, if I do this, well, now if I spend all day listening to praise music, then I'm be able to preach better tonight. See, I can put it in context where you think, well, that sounds pretty noble. That sounds like a good thing, right? But it's twisted. Yes. Now I think because I've done something now. Yeah. See, it might be good things. I'm not. I love it, and I, you know, I'm saying. But the mindset of saying he's doing something because I've done something. Love's not promoted. You can see it in the life of Jesus. Jesus shows up on the scene, inaugural day, going public. Right? Jesus said to uh, John the Baptist, "Behold, the Lamb." The Son of God, the Lamb that takes away the sin, right? So here He shows up to be baptized, and the sky opens up, right? Jesus baptizes the sky. Father says, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, right? Jesus is going public, and God Himself, His voice, is going to make an announcement. Now, I figured He could say anything He wanted to on this day, right? He said, this is my beloved Son. Jason's language, this is my boy, and he's loved. Now I think this is this is before Jesus healed any blind people, as far as recorded. I don't know what happened exactly before that, but no, it, it wasn't famous before that necessarily. So before he performed miracles, before he fed the poor, before he healed the crippled before he did all this stuff that Jesus is famous for doing before he performed one bit God said that's my boy I love him and I'm pleased with him I think I think it's in there on purpose before he performed to help us get out of the mindset to think that we have to perform not provoked. His love for us is not provoked. You know why? Because it was already the maximum amount. It was already present before we even showed up to perform right or wrong anyway. You can't get more of it. You can't get less of it. That's better news than you're acting like, but I can tell it's soaking in. You can't get more of it. What you do does not produce more of God's love. Whether you, uh, what you don't do, doesn't give you less of it. That's right. Somebody look. Somebody look some something up for me here. Uh, Romans five eight. Rosemary. Uh, somebody who. Miss Marilyn, she's got that New Living Translation. I like that. What what's Romans five eight say there? But God showed His great love for us. But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us. By sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. While we were still sinners. You remember the coffee, right? He came and died for us while we were still sinners. The ultimate, Christ, gave Himself for us before we were teaching Sunday school. <laughs> you can't earn it. 
You can't get more of it. You you can't you can't be bad enough for it to get less. I know everybody ain't got guts enough to tell you that, but I will. You can't be bad enough for him to stop loving you or love you less. That's right. Sorry. Anything else is not love. It's there to the maximum amount. Oh, here's one for you. Ephesians 1, 4. Somebody read me that one. Who else got one? There you go. He's got one of them technology ones. He's got all the flavors. Ephesians 1, 4. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on to it. Ephesians 1, 4. We'll, we'll get to it. Ephesians 1, 4. All right, go ahead. <laughs> New Living Translation. Even before He made the world, God loved us. Even before, I'm going to repeat you so the mic will get it. Even before He made the world. Even before He made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ. Even before He made the world, God loved us and chose us to be holy and to be without fault in His eyes. In His eyes. In His eyes. Yes. Yes. In His eyes. Before He created the world, He chose us and loved us. Before you messed it up. Before you got it right. Before you got it wrong. Chose us. Ha, I'm telling you, it's a relief. Yes. It's a relief. Yes, it is. Because we've been bought into the lie that, well, because this is in my life, or that's in my life, or I've messed this up, that somehow that he's not, he can't bless me like he really wants to, or, or is he's, you know, he just puts up with me. I know he loves them good people, or the, you know, all that stuff. He loves you. Good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> to the maximum amount right. that God can love. There's really only one kind of love. The God kind of love. The kind that we're learning. The kind that we're trying to understand. Yes, right. so don't, anything else is not even love. That's right. Anything short of this is not even love. That's right. It's not provoked. He chose us. That means you're not getting out of it. You can choose not to receive it. You can resist it. And you can continue to try to earn it, and try to be good enough for it, and qualify for it, and you'll miss out on it. Yeah. And you'll live a life of struggle and beat your head against the wall. And... That's why we wrote so many songs about heaven. Because <laughs> we made life so miserable. Right. Right. Now, I'm not against songs, though. <laughs> you, know, you, see, you know what I mean God's yeah. idea is for us to live in love right now right. Amen. Right. life with God right now God does not have a different will in heaven than he does in the earth right. That's right. He does, he's not schizophrenic he doesn't have two different wills his will in heaven is the same as his will here I got to think about being chose, you know. I think the more I experience His love, and if you guys have been here very long, you know I've had I had some some dark days. I've had some low days, and I wouldn't take them back now because in those times is when you can't really know love till the bad days. That's right. <laughs> Anybody can love on the good days. You don't even, it, it doesn't even start being love until there's bad days. And so when I started, uh, he, he, he loved me to the maximum level. When I got to the lowest places in my life, and then He started showing me love, then He started showing me Himself, then He started uh, just teaching me and 
breaking me down and showing me and loving me, changed me. I mean, my perspective on everything, I, I'll even call it this. He baptized me in love. And, and so I started understanding this, and he started picking me up, and he started raising me up, and, and it all came by understanding how he loves and who he is. And so there, here I, here I come up in this. Now he's picking me up and healing me and 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 fixing me and showing me because all that's happening now, really, through all this process, is I'm learning more about how it is that he loves me. Amen. And so now I think get to the spot, you know, well, here he's done all this to me, and here he's shown me all this, and here he's taught me all this. And so now I think, well, well now, now that you've shown me this, you can't just leave me sitting here all by myself. Now, I'm, I, I've got, because here's the secret to love, it has to be given away. That's right. And it has to be received by someone else, or else it's incomplete. I believe it's the reason that God looked at Adam and said, it's not good. For him to be alone. Why? Because he walks with me in the garden. He's got more of a revelation and an understanding of who I am than anybody sent ever since him. Adam walked in the garden with God before there was any curse, before there was any sin, before there was any of it. Him and God. Father and Son. You can't know God on that level and not understand and have a revelation of what love is. So here's Adam with this kind of revelation of love. And God said, it's not good for him to be alone. He's got to have somebody to pour that out on. Love's incomplete until you give it away. And then someone receives it. And then this cycle starts. You receive it, you give it. You give it, you receive it. You receive it, you give it. You give it, you receive it. It's, it's this cycle. I'm telling you, it's what everybody's hunting for. And so here I am sitting there just like Adam. Well, you've shown me this now. Well, you, you, you're going to have to do something now. I, I can't know what you've shown me now and sit here by myself and all this and that. And I said, you, you know, um, uh, you're going to have to pick this time. I'm trying to be... You're going to have to pick this time. Am I with me? Yeah. And so I, I gave him a, a little bit of a list of, of character suggestions, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so he says, I, I, I got one for you. I've been saving her. Now don't everybody look at one time. On <laughs> don't everybody look, you hear me? But over to my left, there's a smoking hot woman. <laughs> Black curly hair. And so he said, that's the one right there. Now, he didn't tell her. <laughs> he didn't tell her. So uh, this time, I've got, I've got ears to hear now, right? So, so this one, she'd been chose. And didn't know it. been chose. So I said, all right, I got the goods now. I'm, I, he's taught me all this. I, you know, not saying I'm all the way there yet. Don't, don't, don't think I'm there, but, uh, but I'm a lot further than I used to be. He's showing me all this stuff and everything I need's in me now, right? So I said, I'm, and so here I'm going, I'm going to love her. I'm, I'm, she done been chose. This is the one right here and she don't, she don't want nothing to do with that. <laughs> so she's making me work for, right? So she's, here's the thing, her perception of who I am is not based on who I really am. Yeah. I could really go on with that. <laughs> so she's resisting, right? So I'm having to work for it. Now, in the in a relationship where there's one that's loving and one that the, the, the lover wants to be loving, too, is not receiving, whose responsibility is it to do the work? Whose responsibility is it then? It's mine. It's mine. So I go to work. I start loving I start loving. I keep on loving. See, it's not provoked. See, it's just been chosen. It's there. So it's not It's not based on some sort of response. Response is nice, but it's not based on response. You with me? So now, all, now time goes on, time goes on, right? 
then she finally said, said, you know, she's getting a hold of something she ain't never got a hold of, experienced something, maybe he ain't like I've been told. Man, can you sing that song? I heard you playing it the other day real good. You got that learned good yet? You're not who I thought you were. Yeah, play that a minute. Okay, see, now, now what's happening is love never fails. So love is happening. And so she can't resist for too, too long, you know. I mean, she, she put up a good fight. She lasted a long time. Don't, everybody don't be looking. Right? She, she put up a fight for a long time, but love, love is love. It's what we're all looking for, and I got it from him. So it, it's not going to fail. And so until she finally realizes I'm not who that she thinks I'm, I'm not like who she thinks I'm like. I'm not who she has been perception of who I am. So the walls start coming down and she starts receiving. Yes. A little bit now. Now, now then, I got it from him and it's in me. The God kind of love is in me and she been chose. It's it's for her. It's hers, right? Mm -hmm. Now, now I'm loving her even the time where she's trying to ignore me and trying to resist me and all this going on, right? Now, if that much love is being poured out, the maximum amount is being poured out already. What now does she have to do to raise my level of love? To That's it, right? My point is, it's not provoked. That's right. You can't do anything to get it because it's already there. You can't not do anything for it to not be there because it's not based on your... That's right. <laughs> it's not based on a response. It's there. It exists to the maximum amount, the maximum level. You don't do anything to increase it. You don't not do anything to decrease it. It's the maximum amount. It's perfect. It's it's there, and and all you have to do is receive it. That's right. I don't know that's more analogy because I'm not not all the way there yet, but you know. <laughs> Got anything to add to that? More <laughs> <laughs> uh, correct? Uh, am I telling it right? It already exists. And you've been chosen. That means you ain't getting out of it. That's right. That means I'm going to spend every week changing the perception of who we think he is and what we think he's like. Until we no longer resist. That's right. We all still got resisting. There's nobody here that's not still got messed up perceptions and messed up belief systems. And still have some level of resisting even if it's subconscious. All oh, right here we can say, oh yeah, you know. Belief systems are deep. They've been planting yeah. seeds in us since generations ago. Yeah. Started before we even got here. Jesus said, every seed that's planted in you that was not planted by my Father is getting plucked up. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's going to get plucked up by the revelation of love. Yes. To understand and know who love is. What love's really like. To live in it, experience it, and let it change us. Everybody good? Yeah. Love is not provoked. You're not going to do anything to get more of it. That's right. He's not going to love you more when you get this straightened up and that cleaned up out of your life. Good, Jason. Good. good. That's why they call it rest. One of the greatest benefits of the new covenant is rest. Yes, amen. You no longer have to qualify for it. You no longer have to work for it. You no longer have to be good enough for it. It's a free gift. Because while we were still a mess, He gave the ultimate price to lay down His life. What more could He? 
What more can he do to prove than that? Man, I'd really like to. You better sing that song, dude, because if I get in on listening to this next one, ready? Yes. Listen to the next one. Everybody got it? Love's not provoked? Yes. You're gonna, that's going to simmer on you because even though that sounds simple, we still got some of that in us to think that. Right? It's like I said, I mean, what? Because i got to get up here and speak every week, right? Now, I'm not so naive to think that if I don't ever study and don't ever read, don't ever spend any time with him, am I going to be up here and be any effective at all? No. But if i got to get in the mindset of thinking that, oh, if I do this, that, and then if I do this, and now I'm going to be more effective of a speaker. I'm going to tell you what, Jason, if you knew Jason before, Jason ain't no speaker whatsoever. I couldn't say my name from three people. <laughs> Two and a half to be preferred. <laughs> I got what I got because he loves me. That's right, amen. And when I realized that, that's where the power in me came to spend time with him. Religion tried to shame me. Better read your Bible. You need to read your Bible more. You need to read your Bible more. You're not reading your Bible enough. You're not reading your Bible enough, right? I'm just going to show you a little concept here real quick. You're not reading your Bible enough. Now, reading your Bible is one of the most life-changing things that you can experience, right? It's life. It's life in here. So I'm saying, you ought to read your Bible. You ought to read your Bible. You need to be reading your Bible, right? That sounds noble, right? That sounds reasonable, right? There's a way that seems right, I can say, you need to be reading your Bible. Right? And we do, right? But when I say that, I say, you need to be reading your Bible. You need to be reading your Bible. And religiously, you can say, he's right.